in this lecture we will start by understanding interval estimation and hypothesis testing now you know let's consider an important example that we did in one of the previous chapters which was related to the wage education example we understand that as wage uh, as education increases the wage of an individual should also increase this obviously implies that an individual who has done a graduation degree would be achieving a salary which is much more than an individual who has just passed class 12th what we also did in that example is that we went ahead and we calculated what would be the average increase in mean hourly wages when there is one year increase in schooling and we came up to a number which was 0.7240 this number indicates that as you increase the number of schooling by one year on an average the mean hourly wages increase by 0.72 units the units can be in rupees it can be in dollars it can be whatever your regression model specifies now we understand that whenever we talk about regression we have always been talking about sample now understand this uh, and this is very important let's say that this is a population that i'm talking about i want to understand from this data of the population as to what happens to the income of an individual when he increases his years of schooling but the problem here is that we cannot deal with population so i go ahead i pick up a sample from that and i calculate beta 2 hat this beta 2 hat represents what would be the increase in the mean hourly wages but this is only based on a sample what if i would have picked up another sample and calculated beta 2 hat i would have got a value which would have been something different from 0.7240 this implies that because the sample fluctuates because of fluctuations you know this would not be a very right estimate to begin with sometimes you might get that the increase will be by 0.72 units sometimes you might get that the increase will be by 0.69 units sometimes you may get that the increase will be by 0.79 units and sometimes you may get that the increase will be by 0.64 units obviously when you would average them average different values of beta 2s it will be actually closer to the exact value of beta 2 as you do repeated sampling the average value is expected to be equal to the true value as the number of samples keep on increasing as n tends to reach infinity we obviously know that you know i'm i'm reaching towards an estimate which is on an average equal to beta 2 however individually they may you know their their expected value their average value would be 0.72 but individually they will fluctuate from 0.72 and that is why the question that we are here to ask the question that we now want to ask is that you know because beta 2 hat is not beta 2 it is little above or below beta 2 and it will keep fluctuating from the sample how sure am i that i will receive an increase which is 0.72 when i increase one year of schooling and that is where the concept of interval estimates come in interval estimates are more reliable than point estimates when i say point estimates i just talk about one value i say that you know what if whatever happens whenever you increase by one year your salary would go up by 0.7 units this is one estimate i give you one exact value but now i am saying that 
instead of relying on this point estimate, we construct an interval along around the point estimate. So, you know, we create an interval which says that, you know, approximately your beta 2 is going to be between 0 0.70 to 0 0.75. Supposedly something like this, we create an interval and we say that, you know, I am 95% confident that whenever you increase your sal uh, whenever you increase your schooling by one year, your salary will increase by anything in between 0 0.70 to 75 units. And the, I'm, I'm sure about it. The confidence that I carry is 95% confidence. This is something that I will get with respect to my alpha value, the confidence values. Something that, you know, is also a part of statistics, you would have in the background done entire hypothesis testing using interval estimates, but something which also has a lot of importance when we come to hypothesis testing. So because the point estimators are not very reliable, therefore, instead of just being focused on the point estimates, we go ahead and we construct an interval around the point estimate. It's around the point estimate within, say, let's say, two to three standard errors on either side. And, you know, you, you would know how would we would calculate it as we go through the chapter, how this inter would, interval would be constructed, such that we end up saying that with 95% probability, you know, the true parameter value lies within this interval. Or with 99% probability, the true parameter value lies within this interval. Something like that. That is the concept of interval estimation. This entire chapter is going to be focused, focused on the concept of interval estimation.